Welcome to another Rally Miata all-wheel drive swap video. In this video, we are gonna be tackling the steering and the brakes. So we have to somehow get the steering shaft from the steering wheel to meet up with the steering rack from the Subaru. And then we have to do all new brake lines and get that off figured out, figured out. We also have to mount the steering shaft and do some other stuff. But hopefully by the end of this video, we have a steering all-wheel drive Miata, we have a stopping all-wheel drive Miata, then all we have to do is a going all-wheel drive Miata. So, not much to talk about. Let me show you the steering situation. Oh, but first let me talk about this video's sponsor, carmarshall.com. Carmarshall.com can help you guys save hundreds or thousands of dollars on new or used vehicles. So if you're interested in purchasing a vehicle, check them out. Link in the description down below. So there we have our steering shaft from the steering rack. There we have our steering shaft from the Miata steering shaft. They're both in the same area-ish, but they're at very different angles and heights. So this one is pointing pretty much straight up and is pretty tall. This one is pretty low and at a very low angle. So we have to bring this one up a little bit and then come up with a joint. Now taking the double U-joint thing from the Subaru, sliding it on here, just like so. Now that will get us kind of close, right? But what we have to do is still raise this one. So I'm pretty sure this is on a on a U-joint itself. All we have to do is cut out some of the metal so it can come up higher and then we should be able to cut it, weld it to that, and bada bing, bada boom. The only problem is getting an angle grinder down there. A little bit tricky now that there's a motor in here. After cutting out the firewall a little bit, it can come all the way up to here, which, you know, at the max height, is if that, that's high enough, right? It just has to come over a little bit because you can tell it doesn't quite line up. If it's lining up, then it's too low. So I'll cut a little bit more and then it's looking like this is gonna be pretty easy. <laughs> Looks like I cut enough of the firewall for that to line up. Now we have to cut this. If I use both of these U-joints, see how there's two? If I use both of those, I would have to have some sort of support for the steering shaft because if there's two, then it can flop in two different directions. The thing is that I only need one of these. Two is useful if you're trying to get a higher angle, but the angle is pretty close to, I don't know, it's pretty close. So I should only need one. I'm gonna cut this one off, weld it to the end of that, and then bada bing, bada boom, we done. should turn now. Ow. Yee -yee. Hard to do it with one hand, reaching over. Now we gotta mount the actual steering wheel thing to the roll cage. Way too floppy. That causes that to move. The stock steering column has this little plate on it right here that just connects to this. We're gonna weld the tube from this plate to this tube and then bolt it in right there and <laughs> that's done. Right, now that the steering is done, it's on to the brakes. Admittedly, this is where I've made the first 
somewhat major issue. Really not that big of an issue, but well, we'll see. It might be a, it might be a bigger issue than we think. There's a bar. There's our brake booster. There's a brake master cylinder that has to go on the brake booster. It's close. If you actually like kind of eyeball it, it just not quite there. So we're gonna play a game. The game is called how much material can you shave off a brake master cylinder before it's not functional? Sounds fun. Looks like we got lucky. The answer to our game was that we didn't have to find out because I had to clearance just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit and it fits, fits perfectly. So shouldn't have any issues there. I was able to loosen the brake booster so I could you know, twist it, then slide the thing on, slide it in, tighten everything. So that's all good. Now we have to make some custom brake lines. This front one has to go to this front. This front one has to go to that front. And this rear one has to go to the stock rear splitter. Unfortunately, I had to order a couple parts for the brake system. I had to order some brake line, had to order some stainless steel soft lines for the front and the rear and some other stuff. We'll do that in a little bit. For now, we're gonna go ahead and work on the suspension and the shifter a little bit. So obviously this car is sitting really uneven. It's hard to tell from this angle. The front is significantly taller than the rear. It's a good maybe three or four inches of difference. We are gonna lift the rear more, but since we still have the stock Miata suspension, we're limited to maybe another inch maybe two inches at max. So we also have to lower the front a little bit. Now, if you remember the video where I installed the lift kit on the WRX, you'll remember that this Forrester suspension is very modular. So we're gonna keep the Forrester struts and change out the springs for WRX springs. So that should lower about two inches. And then we have these awesome adjustable top hats to go onto the, the struts. These top hats are adjustable camber, so we can dial in the camber. They have a pillow ball mount, so it rotates a little bit. This top hat also lifts a car roughly three quarters of an inch. So with the WRX springs plus this, we'll lose about an inch and a half of lift, and then adding an inch of lift in the rear should make it perfectly level. Oh, and then we have some upgraded bushings for the shifter. So I got the Forrester strut disassembled. Turns out these are definitely lowering springs. Tine, duh, teen, whatever you wanna call it. Point is that this might lower it too much, but there's only one way to find out. This is definitely gonna be a stiffer spring weight, which, which would be nice, because these were kind of boaty. So we'll put those on, it might be too low. We might have to get some stock WRX springs, but we'll see. So like the struts are actually the same height before and after the spring. It's just that there's a bunch of preload on this spring when it's in the strut, whereas this spring, not so much. But we'll see, it, it might actually work. This top, top mount is so cool. All this free play and all this adjustment. Billet, aluminum, woohoo, baby. And look, while we were doing that, Brake parts arrived. So these are the stainless steel brake lines for the front. All right, moment of truth. Let's test these new springs. Kind of a feeling the moment it touches that ground, it's just gonna sink and sink and sink because that's usually what lower springs do. They are the same height as stock springs, it's the same spring rate, but they're just, they're just squat more. So. Damn it! <laughs> Pretty much exactly what I thought would happen to happen. It's too low in the front now. Damn. It's actually really not too bad, but you can tell it angles to the front and those, those struts are just at the very end of their travel now, so. Waste of time. Cool, nice. 
Nice. But it does look better. It does look more level. Now I know what some of you guys are thinking. Why don't you just keep the Forester Springs and then lift the rear enough to get it sitting level? The problem is that we can only lift the rear about an inch or so. And even with that, if we have the Forester Springs up front, the front will still be a few inches taller than the rear. Right now, the front is really only an inch lower than the rear. So if we get some stock WRX Springs, that will lift the front back to two inches higher than what it is now. And then we lift the rear one inch, boom, it's sitting perfect. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Thing's so squishy. so much better. Awesome. For 50 bucks? Oh. Huh. About that. Okay. Looks like the uh, C-clip wasn't in all the way. <laughs> Damn it, I had to take it all apart again. Mother fricker. Ugh. And now on to the brakes, finally. First thing I did is cut off the little mounting tabs for the soft line. And now I'm gonna go ahead and mount those somewhere on the tube chassis. That way, soft line can be properly mounted. Won't get in the tire or the axle or anything. Then we can work on the hard lines. I also already went ahead and did that for the clutch line there. Looking pretty awesome. We're gonna go full lock to full lock to make sure it has enough Length, it's full lock there, and that's full lock there. Plenty of length. Get it, Caleb. There you go. Oh yeah, you've done this before. <laughs> So the clutch line is in, the clutch hard line is in. So it goes from the mass cylinder to the hard line, to the soft line, to the slave cylinder. We bled it, works flawlessly. And then I made this first brake line here that goes from there up to the master cylinder. the old in with the new okay then so all the brake lines are done and are in brakes are bled clutch is bled clutch line is done steering is done so Pasha yes, sir. go ahead and don't press the brakes okay so I can spin the thing now press the brakes yay they, they work I can't spin it any oh you, you let go right let go. okay good <laughs> Yeah, 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 so brakes work. Yeah, no, they definitely work, so that's cool. And the awesome thing is that, you know, these are WRX brakes, which are significantly larger than the stock Miata brakes, so we've upgraded pads and rotors all around. This will be plenty of stopping power for us. You're gonna put in fifth gear. There you go, <laughs> fifth gear. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it over. It'll spin the wheels, and then you'll push the clutch in, and then it'll stop spinning the wheels. So clutch is engaged, so doing this will spin all five, four, all four wheels. Okay, Pasha, push the clutch in. Yeah. Hey, and they don't spin. All right, uh, drop the clutch now. Oh, all wheel drive launch. Cool, all right. So the clutch is working, it's engaging, it's disengaging, the brakes are working. Now, cooling system and some wiring. 
help. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing, dude. Dude, like race car, man. That's how you enter and exit the car. <laughs> the windshield. This is the windshield. Black windshield. But that is indeed it for this video. We are that much closer to having this thing run and drive and eventually be finished. And hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like. If you didn't, please give it a dislike. I'm super happy with the way everything turned out here and I just can't wait to drive this thing. We are getting pretty close to at least the first test drive and then we have to do a whole bunch more work to make it look nice. So yeah, next video we'll probably be doing wiring. Of course, if you wanna see that next video right now, you can head over to Patreon and see it. Also something I'm gonna say, because so many people have been commenting this, we will be putting Miata panels back on the front. So don't worry, it's not gonna stay exo cage or you know, whatever you wanna call that. It will look like a Miata once we're all said and done. Might be a little difficult to make that work, but we're gonna make it work. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's about it. We did brakes and clutch and steering. Cool, bye guys.